Before we get started with today's interview, just a quick reminder, click the thumbs up, make sure you subscribe and ding the bell so that you don't miss any of the great interviews that we have coming up. Now on to today's interview. So welcome back, everybody. It is my great pleasure today to speak with composer Tom Giroux. Tom, thank you so much for taking time to join us today. My pleasure, Sam. It's always nice to, to be able to talk about music. Awesome. So tell me, do you come from a musical family? I do. I, um, when I was age 12, I joined my brother's band, my family rock band, and we had six kids and we all were inducted into, <laughs> I guess, the Partridge family of North Dakota. Um, and so I really learned to improvise on stage uh, in this rock band. And I continued that until I went to college every single weekend of all those years. In high school, I really uh, expanded my interest into classical music, as many teenagers do, and, uh, and decided to go into music. Wow. So, what a cool thing that, that music was part of what you did as a family. What, what instrument did you play in this rock band? Key keyboards. You know, I started with a Farfisa organ. And then uh, eventually, by the time I went to college, I had the Mini Moog and the Hammond B3 and, and all that stuff. Oh, how cool is that? Somebody who likes music technology, too. Man after my own heart. This is just so cool. Oh, yeah. How did you start composing? What was your introduction to that? I would compose a few like non-vocal uh, songs in our family rock band, like to close the the um, the gigs and, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, the occasional song in high school, like the graduation song and things like that. And then when I was in college, um, my second year, I uh, was in a seminar, a summer seminar for choral writing. I wrote an assignment and the editor that was there giving the class published the piece. And so I thought, well, I think I'll go into film scoring. So I moved to Los Angeles at that point. Never did study film scoring because I really got um, interested in the classical composition. And so I really focused on that, uh, kind of letting the wind blow me through <laughs> through the uh, course of life on that. And it's, it's turned out fine for me, so. Oh, how cool is that? So when you went to college, did you study composition then? Yes. Yes, I did. I started as a double major um, uh, with piano and composition. And then I just fairly quickly went into composition full time. And then after that, I moved back to Los Angeles. And uh, after a couple of years of just kind of gigging and whatnot, a friend of mine said there's, you know, an opportunity to, to join a publishing company. So I applied for the job and got it. And then that's how I kind of got into publishing because it was a natural fit for me. I kind of have a propensity for visual as well as the musical. So it was a nice fit, you know. Um, so um, some of these pieces on the list, for instance, were very conscious studies for me on using a modern language that's appealing, but I don't want to necessarily follow functional harmony. So I need a, a kind of a modern twist to it, but it still has to be pleasant for mom and dad in the audience and for the teacher and the students to really enjoy the sound of it, but it is completely a, almost a Puritan sort of thinking of, of, on how the composition works. And then the next piece may be just a romantic piece that does rely on functional harmony. So the, the nice thing about educational music is I can wear those hats. I can change it as long as I tick the boxes. Is it teachable? Is it learnable? And is it pleasant for an audience to hear? Ultimately, music education boils down to one thing, the audience being impressed by the performance of the students and enjoying what that student did. That encourages the student to continue on. The longer I go at this, the more I really, truly enjoy the essence of, of creation for this. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you, Sam. My pleasure. <laughs> 